Hey, what's going on? Thanks for coming by. I am messing around with my software today. And I just wanted to uh, share with you uh, something that I was working on. And it's not quite ready yet, so this is just sort of a preview video. And what happened there? No response from vehicle. I have my truck outside. You know, it's the same old situation that I, that I do to you guys, you know. Let me see. Get in touch with that car out there. Hey, there it is. All right. So one of the last things we did here, right, I added, um, basically this was the front page, right? And you would come into live data. It wouldn't go here. If The latest version that you can get doesn't stop here. It goes all the way straight from that first page. It goes all the way to here. And this thing automatically talks to your car because this list of stuff I have to get from the car. If you notice, if you notice when we come in to the live data page, it has, to, it, there's no list. It has to get the list from the car, right? This is standard stuff. These are standard OBD2 deals. And then, of course, at this point, you can start listening. And I've sharpened up some of this. I think some of these uh, things were going slow uh, a little bit. It's detail. I'll show you in a second what, what may have been giving us a little bit. So I think this is working a little bit faster. Let me just, uh, let me just check something real quick. I was, uh, I have a charger on my truck, right? And I just sort of have the key on and, um, right. Yeah. I want to check the voltage and the charger was sort of, it was, it was holding the voltage up at like 15 volts and that's just, uh, that's, a little uncomfortably high you're supposed to bring it up to like 14 point something you know, bring it up there kind of I and mean, if you don't have a lot of load on it let off you know and kind of but this thing was holding at 15 so now I have a trickle charging and if I leave it like this indefinitely it would definitely not charge it would you know die on me but I rather so I got to keep an eye on the voltage which wonderfully my application will do for me um, and so this should be working a little bit faster. I've changed, I, yeah, this is not the place, but I've optimized some things and hopefully you know, that thing is pretty far out the door, out the window there. So cat temp. Yeah. Those always read very low. Oh, you know, last time I made a video, I had, I made, I, I uh, I was talking about my ambient temperature sensor. This is this uh, my ambient temperature sensor in on my truck is bad. It's like sixty something degrees out, and it's telling me it's forty. If I go out there and unplug it, it'll just read this this value. I I think it's the temperature sensor. I, I should check the wires. I should check. Maybe I maybe I'll go and check uh, double check the connectors and everything else all the way back to the CPU, ECU, whatever. But I was I was coming up with all kinds of crazy stuff about in some other video why this value was implausible. Oh, the and they're all bull, BS guesses, right? Like one, I would say, oh well, I think uh, my because my Impala reads and every other car, uh, the Toyotas I read, they all the ambient temperature is right what it's supposed to be, but not my truck. And I'm coming up with all these explanations because, you know, oh, the, the ECU remembers it. The, the truck is not running, so therefore it froze the, the temperature. It'll update after, it, which I found out it did not. You know, after I start the truck, it, the temperature did not update to a current value. Uh, what was, uh, I made some other excuses about, uh, oh, that they, they, maybe they use a different calculation. But you know what? The OBD2 standard has a specific calculation for this. So this is basically telling me that my my sensor my, I think it's pretty much my sensor but there, there's something wrong with the sensor the, the value coming back from the sensor in my truck it's not the, it's not my software it's not for doing some kind of weird calculation it's not the Martians coming down it's none of that so actually this software because I'm you know because what I'm doing is I'm I'm picking out these pids and I'm looking at them and I'm looking to see that the calculations the stock calculations that I'm giving you that I'm putting in here are giving us values that at least make sense you know, do I know that uh, accelerated position D is supposed to be 19 no but if I push it I see that the, the values change in a reasonable way see what I'm saying 
ambient air temperature that's not that's the only one that's coming up with some crazy and sometimes i would see that the the calculations because you have to define what the calculations are like what's a weird calculate like the uh, like the bar- i think some one or two of these pressures is kind of a weird calculation but then if i look at them i think that the oh what i do is i'll compare it to my other scanner like i'm not even sure what the hell this uh Oh, and the units I'm using. Yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta, I, I, yeah, I gotta add a unit thing back and forth, right? Imperial or metric or whatever. So I guess you're just at the mercy of the units I'm deciding to use and evap pressure. I'm not sure if that's it's water inches is what's the other value for evap pressure. But anyway, this was what my scanner was giving me. So I was like, okay, that's sir, that's right. <laughs> um, other things the barometric pressure yep see it it was 31 earlier when it was nice out now it's not so nice out and it's a little bit less so you know just like stuff like that you know it just makes sense anyway okay okay so i just wanted to that's not the update the preview what's the preview right the preview is is this pit user pids first thing that happened is the the version if you have right now is the latest one is 1.0022 and when if you hit live data it will it will go directly to where we just were which is you know these user these these standard obd2 pits which for the 500th time it's going to load up but but we don't care so let's get out of here since okay fine but then we have these user pits and i'm not sure what the incarnation of this is going to be it's still got to be able to add and subtract them and and but what what i'll do yeah i don't know what's going on right now the list is fixed and it's just sort of hard coded but you can edit them so it's sort of like it's almost like there's seven pids that you can use and that's no more or less right it's just that way because that's the way that uh, i sort of initialized it it's enough for me to experiment so you know it's like the other pids you're going to be able to select them edit them but you can be able to select them and start and see these values and the cooling temperature is going to be like what i'm going to demonstrate with now basically online you can find all these pids for you look up your vehicle and do an internet search and um do a look up for obd2 pids for your vehicle and you're likely to come up with codes. And let me just tell you something. These codes should start with a 22. Or a 21 or a 23. But almost always a 22. But they should not be starting with with 11 and 16. And uh, all these weird numbers. Those are the second numbers. So all these pids right here. Like, and by the way, this right here is bit 2. right? So, so the actual value is 16.2f bit two to look at for this value right so that's what the you might see stuff like that but but any of these would start with 22 i've already looked at this so 1166 this is actually 221166 where this would be 22091f etc 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 actually that's suspicious about that i haven't checked all these and i know some of them don't work uh this for example would be 22 Eleven four one, right? So, uh, two two is a mode that says these are manufacturers' pids. So manufacturers' pids always start with mode two two. Okay. Anyway, very good. Fine. So let's go back, and what you can do is you can actually edit these. And what I do is like if you have multiple selected, I just edit the first one. So let's just go here and let's this cooling temperature, right? And the cooling temperature is just the same pid that we know and love from. You know, famous pit. It's it's a service mode. You know, O one, O five. If you go to a terminal, get an ELM three D seven, three twenty seven, hook it up, and put in O one, O five. You'll get back a value that that's used to calculate the coolant temperature. Let me fix this. Uh, I I put this in there specifically so I can show how it updates. So basically, you can define a name for the pit. It's kind of like what Torque does, I guess. I shouldn't even mention them, right? Anyway, so there's a calculation, and based on how many received counts you're expecting, which for the coolant temperature is just one, one byte is expected, so then you just run your calculation. This is a temperature calculation based on A. And this, where does this calculation come from? The negative 40 is that the 
actual reported value is in Celsius and zero represents negative 40. So if you if A comes back and it's a zero, zero, then the actual final value is negative 40. And then you do your Fahrenheit. This is going to give a Fahrenheit calculation. And then you can define your, your unit, right? Like whatever you want to call it. And then what are you going to transmit? This is the code that you transmit to the ELM 327. And this is, of course, how many you're getting back. Like if I had two, then I might have a B here. I might have A plus B. Um, you can do up to five for the receive counts. I've never seen more than five on any of the specs. Typically, it's going to be one or two for any of these. Coolant temperature is one. So, so basically, that's how you would set it. You come in. Oh, also, you can specify, how do I say done? how many decimal points you want to see for the temperature. Right now I have two. So let us supply and go back. Coolant temperature. So this is, let's just take a look at this one. And we get the 53 point whatever. Now actually the point value on the temperature, I don't know if it's worth anything or not. Like I was, you know, I don't know what the resolution is, but if you, let's say I just didn't, I just wanted to see the temperature because I don't care if it's 53 or 52, but I do want to know if it's 180 or 200 or 300, right? So I can come back in here and I can edit this and I can say, you know what? I just, I don't care. Don't, don't clutter up my life with decimal points. Uh, everything else, of course, it wouldn't change. And then I can come back here for coolant temperature, start, and there I go. No, no more decimal points. Or let's say I wanted to just, you know, just, just be crazy. So just to show that this will um, do things with, you know, whatever the calculation is. Uh, I'm just perverting the calculation. I don't know, forgive my choice of words here, but that's pretty much what happened to the calculation. <laughs> so, what are we going to get here? Some kind of crazy number. Yeah, okay, 32, some million degrees. Well, whatever I added to it. So, let's go back, edit this. Right. And let's say, I got this screen. This is not nice, these screens, right? Let's say I just want one decimal point. Actually, all that that's all we saw in the beginning, right, is one. It won't give you an extra zero. What it will do is make sure that you don't have more than the number of decimals you specify. But if you just only have one, if you specify two decimals and you only have one, it, will, it won't show the extra zero. Let's go back. So now our temperature should be back to normal start that and there it is now what's also interesting is there's boolean like this fan status right which i got from this stuff here so it's definitely giving me a response but i don't know what what it's giving me a response of zero so i have to start the truck and see if it works and i haven't done that yet um but like let's look, look at the calculation for example see so, yeah, i calculate okay so here is an example 22 16 3f right here's that this is this is the manufacturer's mode. This is comparable to mode 01, but it's 22, so mode 22, and the PID actually has four digits. So I go 163F and mode 22, and this is a manufacturer's supposedly fan status. Now this calculation, don't worry about necessarily what it means, well, unless you're really interested, then you gotta really look into it. But but what it's doing is testing for the highest bit. Uh, bit seven, and uh, is it bit? Uh, yes, it's testing for bit seven. And notice it's a greater than. It's a Boolean expression. This calculation can only yield a zero or a one, and it reads like this: If a minus twenty-eight is greater than zero, then it'll be one. If a minus twenty-eight is less than zero, it'll be zero. Right, and that's it basically. It receives count of just one byte, uh, A, and the minus 28 is to, to remove 
the possibility of the la the highest bit, the, the most significant bit, but I'm not even sure if that's right. Anyway, but the point is that you can create a calculation not necessarily of a value, but of a Boolean with one or a zero. Uh, I'm not sure how to translate that into a, like a yes or no, or but you know this is the primitive point. Decimals don't matter. So let's say and let's like run that. So let's just run that along with the coolant temperature. And it should just give us a one or a zero. Okay, so it's giving us a zero. It's reading something back from the car. I know I've tested it. Um, so let's come in here and let's say, now remember to edit this, it has to be, the, it, it, it would edit, if I hit edit, it would do coolant. So let's uh, edit the fan status again. Now, if I come in here and I just, right, if I change this calculation here uh, to the other direction, from a less than to a greater than or vice versa or whatever it was. I get confused when I get into this type of minutia. Okay. All right. So the point here is I'm trying to change that zero to a one. So let's see. I, I think I, I forget. I already forget what exactly it was. So let's come back here. Let's go to the fan status and go start. And what do we get here? Oh, okay. So, all I did is, is just reverse the Boolean logic, 0 or 1. Um, so, the way that this was supposed to work in its original form is that if that bit goes high, then this would go high live while this is you know showing and if the fans are now here's the thing my ford has a clutch fan it's 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 operated off of temperature and a fluid clutch so there's no electronic on or off so i don't know if it even knows if the fan is when, when it's what's going on with the fan so i think this is for other fords with electric fans like my impala has electric fans but i still to this point don't know what the status bits so this is all like digging you do this digging on your own right so anyway um i'll try to get this out there when i can but the idea now is that there's user pids that you can define you can you know i also um you know you can define the right the unit that gets shown fahrenheit or uh what what what's some other units you know PA for Pascals or Pascals or I don't know however you say it or whatever kind of uh, symbol you want to put after you know like like you know I could put any kind of symbol right that that would be a kind of a crappy symbol but let's see if that works this is fuel level let's take a look at that yeah so you see what it is you just whatever kind of symbol you want to see next to it so I'm thinking what I'll do is like if you had different sets of these, right? If you could load one set for one car, another set for another car, right? Where you sort of have to find your own PIDs for the car or whatever. As, as you know, so you would always have your standard PIDs that you could look up with your, you know, your real standard, your, your stuff that you know you're not, you definitely want to see like your fuel trims. Okay, what? Okay, is this working? It's working pretty good today. Must not be uh, any UFOs nearby. Whenever there's like spaceships and stuff, this stuff stops working properly. I think that's what they did to my ambient air temperature sensor. You know, it's so hard trying to do this with all this interference. Anyway, anyway, so there it is, man. I just wanted to give you a preview. This is a preview video, so this isn't really anything except for me just kind of saying, look what I'm trying to do, right? So stay tuned. Something will be coming down the pike sooner or later. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. I love it that you guys are interested. And, you know, um, there it is, man. So just, just go out there and have a great day. Thanks a lot.